Good Sunday morning. Let me take this time to say happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Amen. I am so glad to see each and every one with us this morning. And for you mothers, I hope and pray that you have the most blessed day. Amen. We thank God for our mothers. Amen. All right. As we begin our devotional reading, <clears throat> if you uh, if you can, let's go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 31. This is by far my favorite place to read on Mother's Day and as we think about our mothers. Proverbs chapter 31. You'll have, I'll have to apologize to you. I'm a little out of breath. I'm back there uh, shaking hands with everybody. And my wife said, you're live. You can get up there at any time. We're live. <laughs> all right. As always, we welcome all those that watch us, by the way, on Facebook. All right. Proverbs 31.10. Notice what the Bible says. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? In other words, she is priceless. You cannot put a price on this godly mother. And the heart of her husband doeth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. And she will do him good and not evil all of the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and work willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ship. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night early in the morning and giveth meat uh, to her household in a portion to her maidens. She considereth the field and buyeth it with the fruit of her hands and planted a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengthened her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good, her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle and, to, and her hands also to the distaff. She stretcheth out her hands to the poor Yea, she uh, reaches forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all of her household are clothed with scarlet. And she maketh herself coverings of tapestry and clothing of silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. Thank you, you may be seated. You know, just like that old saying goes behind every great man, there is a great woman, right? And this Proverbs woman here, this mother, she maketh her husband uh, what he is. He is known by her, amen? Behind every great man, there is a great woman. And uh, as we think about this woman here that the Bible is talking about, when you read this whole chapter, you can see the sacrifices she makes for her household. And every one of us here this morning, you probably got a testimony as you look back on life, the sacrifices that your mother or your grandmother has made uh, on your behalf and how they have enriched your life, right? I thank God for my mother. I still have her. I'm very fortunate to have my mom. And uh, if you're here today and your, your mom is already gone, she's in heaven, and we just pray for you because I know today might be hard for a lot of people as you remember your mother or grandmother, okay? So we're going to begin uh, our service uh, in prayer, and then we're going to have Brother Randy come and lead us in worship. So Heavenly Father, as we come before you, very meek and very humbly this morning, we thank you for this day that you set before us, for this time that once again we can assemble together as we lift up our hearts, as we worship you in praise. God, we thank you so much for motherhood. We thank you for our mothers, our grandmothers, the the, the women that has or are associated in our life that has enriched us, has had a great influence upon us, Lord. I, I pray a special blessing to be upon them. Let them know that they are greatly appreciated. And Lord, for all of those that don't have their mother with them today or their grandmother, Lord, we just pray that your grace, and we know that your grace will be sufficient, but comfort their hearts, God, and thank you for that blessed hope that if they died in the Lord and we make preparations for heaven, one day we shall see them again. Lord, I pray this morning that everything will be done and said will go to glorifying you. We pray a special blessing once again for the sick, the suffering, 
And for those that's battling with depression, anxiety, help them to look unto you. For it's in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yeah, welcome out to the house of the Lord today. And I do like to thank uh, all the mothers that are here today and uh, just wish you a happy Mother's Day. Kind of a tradition, we like to sing uh, uh, Faith of Our Mothers on this. And it's not in the hymnal, so Tina typed it up when we had it on the mother over here, which couldn't really see it. So if you'll start at the top, it's like the verse, and then down the bottom, the chorus. Then we'll do this in the middle of the second verse and the chorus. That's kind of how it's laid out on this uh, overhead. Can you dim the lights a little bit, Wayne? I can't hardly see.
seen those days of which I dream when memory recalls them now and then. And with what rapture sweet my weary heart would be if I could hear my mother pray again. If I could hear my mother pray again. If I could hear her tender voice as then. So happy I would be. Would mean so much to me. If I could hear my mother pray again She used to pray that I on Jesus would rely And always walk the shining gospel way So trusting still his love I'll seek that home above where I shall meet my mother some glad day. Within the old home place, her patient smiling face was always spreading comfort, hope, and cheer. And when she used to sing to her returning king, it was a song. Oh, 
enjoyed the worship songs there. We tried our best to uh, select out these songs that would honor our mothers. Does somebody else have a song this morning? All right, if not, take your Bibles as we go to the Old Testament to the first book of Samuel, chapter 1. The first book of Samuel, chapter 1. And again, let me just say, uh, we're so pleased that you chose to worship God with us today. Uh, I'm so thrilled that, to have you in our midst as we worship God together. And we pray that we can be a blessing to you. If you're physically able, let's go ahead and stand as we reference the reading of the Word of God. You know, I, just, I simply love that last song that played there concerning Mama's Bible. It's been said so many times, this blessed book, this Bible will keep you from sin or sin will keep you from this Bible. And I want this Bible to keep me from sin, right? And I'm sure you do too. Okay, 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 8. And then said Elkanah her husband to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am I not better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli uh, the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. And she vowed, avowed, and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look upon the afflictions of thy handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord. All of the days of his life, there shall, uh, the, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth or he noticed her and the Bible says now Hannah she spake in her heart only her lips moved but her voice was not heard therefore Eli thought she had been drunken and Eli said unto her how long will thou be drunken put away thy wine from thee 
And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am uh, a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have uh, drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thy handmaid of a daughter of liar or the devil. For out of the abundance of my complaint, I grieved and I have spoken uh, hitherto. And Eli answered and said, Go in peace. And God of Israel grant thee the petitions that thou hast asked of him. And, and she said, Let thy handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her con uh, countenance was no more sad. Thank you. You may be seated. This was a spiritual woe for Israel during this time. So much of the priesthood was corrupt, and we know that Eli, his sons, were also corrupt. He didn't discipline them as the Lord had commanded. Uh, he was saying in so many words, boys will be boys. And uh, the corruption went on. But here is a little godly woman. She is praying. She comes before the Lord and she pours her heart out to God. Uh, this morning, we want to look at Hannah, a, a mother or a, or, or a woman that wants to be a mother. So the Bible says that Hannah and her husband would come up yearly at that appointed time uh, to bring sacrifices and worship there in the temple. Every year as they would come, other women would make fun of Hannah because she couldn't bear any children. Her womb was closed and, and they laugh and they make fun of her. But she wanted to be a mother's soul. Amen. And, and, and at this time, she comes before the Lord and she prays so earnestly, so intensely. She says, oh, Lord, if you'll just give me a man child, I will give him back to thee. And, and that prayer, without a doubt, pleased the Lord. And Eli thought she was just another woman who stumbled into the temple drunk. That's the spiritual woe they were in in those days. And he couldn't understand. But when uh, Hannah says, no, I am not drunk, but I'm of a sorrowful spirit. I'm praying unto the Lord that he would give me a child. And, and the Bible says uh, that uh, God heard her prayer and she went back in a different way than she came. She came so burdened down, but she left rejoicing in the Lord. So as we think, and uh, I, I'm going to I'm going to bring some characteristics out when we think about a godly mother. And there are so many more than what I want to uh, preach on this morning. But we think about Hannah. And you know, friends, can I say this before we begin? Besides God's love, there is no love like a godly mother's love. There's just simply no love. I think that comes closer. A godly woman, a godly mother comes more closer to God's love than any love that we could ever experience. She is a mother of prayer. Would you not agree? The Bible says in verse 10, she came and she poured her heart out to the Lord. I mean, she was accustomed to prayer. You know, I love what Billy Graham said one time. He said, uh, uh, whenever I was going uh, evangelizing, uh, I took comfort in knowing that my mother prayed for me. Amen. What, what a wonderful thought that is. And, and, and you know what, mothers? We need to continue to pray for our children, right? And, and a lot of you women this morning, godly women, you, you want to be a mother. I would say this to you. Uh, be like Jacob, amen? As Jacob wrestled with the angel, uh, the angel says, let me go. And Jacob says, I will not let you go until you bless me. I mean, get a hold of God and hold on tight to what you're praying for. I mean, the purpose in your heart that you're going to be a Hannah. You're going to pray and you're going to continue to pray. Amen. Again, Jesus says in Matthew 7, 7, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and it shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. I think so often we're so quickly to give up on our heart's desire. But you know, the Bible says in Psalms 37, 4, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. You know, as Christian people, when we walk upright and, and when we obey the word of God and we pray, I, I believe God will grant us what we're praying for according to his will. You know, 
uh, and I know all of us, all of us can testify this morning that we probably wouldn't be here if we didn't have a, a godly mother or grandmother praying for us. You know, oftentimes I'll give my testimony and, and, and I remember as a part of the son, I went back out into the world. I turned my back on God. I made a shipwreck of my life. But you know what? I had a godly mother that was praying for me. And if, and if we didn't have a godly mother praying and, and lifting us up to the Lord, we probably wouldn't be here this morning. I want you to think about this. Uh, Adrian Rogers, uh, what a wonderful man and pastor he was. He graduated some years ago. He's in the heavenlies now, but his ministry lives on. Notice what he said. He said, there is not a promise that God cannot keep, no, uh, no prayer that God will not answer, and no problem too hard for him to solve. Amen. Oh, I love that. You know, one day this little girl was sitting on her mama's lap. And she said, Mama, is God dead? And her mom looked at her and said, What? Well, why would you even ask that, honey? She said, Well, you no longer talk to him. Think about that. You know, children learn more through observation than anything else. When their little minds are developing, you know, they just want to be like mama and dad. And you know, it's the way that we live out our, our life before them helps to shape in their little minds and, and who they're going to become. And, and, and mothers, we, we, we got to continue uh, uh, just being a, a godly woman that God has called you to be, right? She was a mother uh, of prayer. And, and again, thank God for mothers who's prayed for us down through the ages. But she also was a mother of commitment. Uh, the Bible says here again in verse 11, and she vowed, vowed and said, Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look on the afflictions of thy handmaid and remember me and not forget thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man child, then will I give him to the Lord all the days of his life. And there shall no razor come upon his head. She, she was a, a woman of commitment. First and foremost, she was committed to the Lord. We know that for a fact. Hannah was a godly little woman, but she was committed to her husband. As the Bible says that wives obey your husband, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And, but you know what? She would soon be committed to her little son. She prayed and, and God gave her a little baby and she named him Samuel. And Samuel became one of the greatest prophets in Israel's history. She was committed. And you know, as we read in our devotional in Proverbs 31, we see that that a woman, that mother is committed. She's committed to God. She's committed to her, her husband. She's committed to her family, to her children. She rises up early in the morning and she makes breakfast for her family. She will not send her children out of, on, through the day on an empty stomach, will she? She works with her hands. Uh, she don't know what idleness is. She burns the midnight oil maybe sewing clothes, maybe making things for the children. Friends, do you, do you remember a time that your mom was so committed, your mother was so committed to you, they made sacrifices throughout your life just that you might have a better life than what they did. They did these things to enrich your life. You know, I remember, I remember uh, when we would go to school, mom would give us lunch money. She would give us break money. And I didn't know this until years later, but as she did that, she would go to work, not a penny in her pocket. I mean, she was committed. You know, this is why, this is why we want to acknowledge our mothers, not just one day out of a year. We want to acknowledge our mothers and grandmothers and the, and the godly women who has, again, enriched our life. Amen. We want to acknowledge them every day and to be thankful of them. You know, in the Ten Commandments, the Bible says, honor thy father and thy mother. Paul said this in Ephesians 6, 1. He says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. 
honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest live long upon the earth. I try my best to honor my parents, which my dad is already in the heavens, but I call my mom every day. My mom has been so committed to me and my brother throughout the years. And you know what? We want to repay that. We owe a debt to our mothers. Amen. We owe a debt to them. They, they make sacrifices to us as we was growing up. And it's time to uh, uh, turn the table, if you please. It's time to, to make sacrifices for them. Oh, praise God for motherhood. John MacArthur, he's one of my very favorite pastors. I, I, love, I love reading his material and watching him. Notice what he said here. And this is so true. He says, to be a mother is by no means second class. Men may have the authority in the home, but the women have the influence. The mother, more than the father, is the one who molds and shapes those little lives from day one. Would you not agree? <laughs> Amen. So true. It is so true. Here is a mother's poem. The author is unknown, but listen to this. And I told my little daughter-in-law, and I don't look at her as an in-law, I look at her, we look at her as her, as her daughter. She is very special to us and we love her. But as I ran across this poem, I told Sabrina, I said, I thought about you, but listen to this. It says, dear Lord, it's such a hectic day with little time to stop and pray. For life's been anything but calm since you called me. <laughs> to be a mom. Running errands, matching socks, building dreams with stacking blocks, cooking and cleaning and finding shoes and all other things that children lose. Fitting lids on bottle bugs, wiping tears and giving hugs. A stack of last week's mail to read. Where is the quiet time I need? Yet when I steal a moment, Lord, at the sink or the ironing board to ask the blessings of your grace, I see then in my little one's face that you have blessed me all the while as I stoop to kiss those precious smiles. <laughs> Amen. Oh, thank God for mothers. This will be a good time to say thank God for mothers. Thank God for grandmothers. Amen. Hey, listen, we love you. We, we just thank God for you. Thank you for sacrificing so much for us as we was growing up. But then third, she was a mother of faith, wasn't she? Again, let's look in verse 18. And she said, let thy handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. She was exercising faith, amen, that this was going to happen. And church, we need to do this at times, right? I told you that we need to be visionaries as Christian people. Uh, when we pray, you need to visualize that coming to pass because it increases and helps your faith. The Bible said this in Hebrews 11. 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So she was a mother of faith. And being a mother of faith, she would instill that faith into her little precious baby. She would instill the Christian values and principles in that little baby. Once again, friends, you know, when you think about little children, they, they learn so much by observation. Amen. Just like that little girl says, Mama, is God dead? I don't never see you talking to him no more. And you know, this is so important, friends, that we live out our faith 24-7. As we, as we dismiss after a while, as we go back home and wherever we go, we need to always exercise faith, right? Amen. Because faith is a substance that pleases God. Not only that, but she is a mother of sacrifice. As we had just pointed to a while ago. And you know, the Bible says that uh, once the child was weaned, she took him and gave him to the priest as she had promised. And God always honors us when we keep our promise. 
God is a promise maker. He's a promise keeper. And he expects for you and I to do the same. Amen. She did exactly that. She, she took him to Eli the priest. And every year at that appointed time, as they would go up and to bring their sacrifice and worship, the Bible says in chapter 2 that she would bring him a little coat. Uh, let me read that to you in chapter 2, verse 19. Moreover, his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him from year to year when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. You know, I don't, the Bible doesn't say this, but I believe she came more than just once a year. Amen. She made sacrifices for her little children or for her little child. And you know what? That's what mothers do. Mothers put their children before them. And you know, godly mothers, godly mothers, they are so content knowing that their children is well and that they're, they're fed well, right? Amen. They're not really concerned about the riches of this world. They're just so happy and content knowing their children are well and happy. I probably told this, I know I told this to you last year, but you probably uh, forgot it by now. Um, one snowy morning, one snowy morning, a mother sent her child out to school and man, it was coming a blizzard. So she called the school dispatch answer and she says, uh, sir, is bus 46 there yet? I'm awful worried about my son. And he said, no ma'am, uh, it hasn't arrived yet, but when it does, I'll let you know. Five minutes later, that mother called back again. Sir, could you tell me if bus 46 has made it in there? Uh, not yet, ma'am, but when it does, I'll give you a call. Well, five minutes later, she calls. She says, oh, I'm so sorry. I apologize, but I'm worried. Is my little boy there yet? Uh, bus 46. He said, no, no, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here comes the school bus. Yes, bus 46 is just pulling in. What's your little child's name? And I'll tell him that you called. And she said, oh, no, no, sir. Uh, he's the bus driver. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, man, listen, man, you might as well to accept it. You're always going to be mama's baby. Hey, man, I'm 52 year old and I talk to my mom every day. And before she hangs up, she wants to know, have I ate? Am I doing good? I said, mom, I'm having to, I'm having to buy new clothes because I'm getting bigger. So I guess I'm doing okay. <laughs> but she's always wanting to know how I'm doing and, and everything. If I'm eating well, I'm eating good. <laughs> Listen, when you think about motherhood, motherhood don't stop uh, when you walk out of the house and you get married and you start your own life. Motherhood is a lifetime commitment. Man, you can be 60, 70 year old, but uh, your mama in your mama's eyes, you're her little baby and she's going to love you. Amen. Thank God for mothers. And you know what? Mothers doesn't view motherhood as a job. They view that as a privilege, a privilege to serve and, and to take care of their, uh, of their children and of their household. I believe motherhood is probably the greatest calling that women can have. And, and you know, a lot of times women, mothers, they, they might, they might, Think you know I, I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a stay-at-home mom. I'm raising my kids, and I don't know. Uh, maybe 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 I failed in life. But you know what, friends? Listen, mothers, you have great success. Amen. You know, a lot of mothers is not privileged to stay home and raise their children. We're living in a day and time where it almost takes two incomes to even get by. And if you're a stay-at-home mother, you are blessed, right? Yeah. You know, when, when, when I was growing up, um, I spent a lot of time with my grandparents. And my grandmother was a homemaker. And she always took care of myself and other grandchildren. She had a lot of grandchildren. But I, I, I'll always remember the sacrifices she made. And she puts me in the mind of the Proverbs 31 woman. She got up early. Uh, uh, of a morning and she made breakfast. Listen, the alarm clock didn't have to wake me up. You know what woke me up? The smell of sausage, eggs, pancakes, homemade biscuits. Boy, have I lost you. <laughs> I mean, I, we have absolutely derailed, haven't we? All we can think about now is that, oh, that home cooking. Whew. 
I love it. But the sacrifices that my mother and grandmother made for us, mm, I just so appreciate them. And then she is a praising mother. We see this in chapter 2. She is a mother of praise. Look what Hannah says here. After she, after she has exercised faith that, yes, she is going to bear a son. Amen. Uh, and we ain't got time to read this whole chapter. Let me just read you two verses out of chapter 2, verse 1. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiced in the Lord. My horn, horn is always a sign of strength in the Bible. My strength is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation, thy deliverance. Uh, there is none holy as the Lord, for there is none besides thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. Amen. Praise the Lord. She is a mother of praise. And oftentimes I remember uh, standing at my grandparents, my, my grandmother had a little room off to the side. She called it her sewing room. She would always make quilts. She was always quilting. And uh, she'd get in there, she'd turn some gospel music on, boy, she'd start crying. And as a little boy, I said, I said, Grandma, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? Where are you hurting? You're crying. She would say, I'm just happy. And that would frustrate me so much. I mean, how can you be happy and bawling at the same time? But, you know, as I got older and surrendered my life to the Lord, and as I've told the church many times, when I get happy in the Lord, I cry. I cry. It's a happy tear. Amen. She was rejoicing. And, and Hannah was a mother of praise. She praised God for answered prayers. Friends, listen, thank God that he hears us and that not only he hears us, but he responds to our request, right? She praised God for his promises. She praised God for who he was, that he was the only true and living God. She praised God for a joyful heart, amen. Again, Paul said in Ephesians 5, 18, and be not drunken with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and singing and making melody unto your hearts unto the Lord, amen. We need to be filled with the Spirit of God. I bet you can say that my mother or my grandmother was a praying mother. She was committed. She had strong faith that has influenced me down uh, through the ages. She made so many sacrifices for us. And yes, she was a praising mother. Amen. Oh, listen, thank God for our mothers. But you know what? Before I conclude the message this morning, I think about how much my mom, my grandmother loves me. But it can't even compare to the love of God. Jesus loves us unconditionally. And I know our mothers and grandmothers do as well. But Jesus went to the cross and he died for each and every single one of us. Paul said in Romans 5, 8, but God commanded his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus loves us this morning. And if you're here and you've never trusted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, friends, listen, you really don't know what true love is until you're introduced to Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I want you to stand with me. That's as far as we feel led to go. Jesus loves you. He died for you. And he wants you to open up your heart and life and to receive him. Would you do that? I hope we've been a blessing to you, our Facebook family and friends. Uh, if you ever need us, uh, just reach out to us. We'll try our best to uh, come to you or try to meet your need. Uh, let me just say this. If you still have your mothers with you today, show them how much you really love them and appreciate them every single day. Because you know what? There's going to come a day that our mothers will not be uh, no longer with us. So show them today just how much you love them. And as they've made sacrifices for you over the years, it's time to turn the tables. Amen. It's time to take care of them. Until next Sunday, may God bless you. Now that we're off of Facebook, let me ask you.